Hi, everyone. Buongiorno. <laughs> um, I'm Allison Angus, and I'd like to take a few minutes to show how the IntelliCAD Technology Consortium is using some of the BIM-related SDKs uh, from the ODA. For those of you who don't know, the ITC is like the ODA. It's uh, an open, member-directed, nonprofit company that does not create um, end-user products. It creates IntelliCAD, which is a full-featured CAD editor and platform, and it's based on the ODA libraries. And ITC members use the IntelliCAD engine to build industry-specific vertical solutions. So what I'd like to talk about today is the BIM RV SDK from ODA and the IFC SDK specifically. Um, using these SDKs, we in IntelliCAD can not only visualize and print, but mark up and draw on top of a BIM model and also convert BIM models to DWG primitives for editing within existing DWG tool sets, tool sets that um, ITC members uh, have existing. So how does it work? IntelliCAD loads the ODA, BIM RV, and IFC uh, libraries, and then you can attach Revit and IFC files in a DWG file as an external underlay. You can also import the files, which converts the data to um, drawing primitives in the DWG file, but mostly I want to just focus on the, the underlay aspect. IntelliCAD stores the underlay as a custom object in the DWG database, and the file is available for viewing and data is accessible too. The custom object is a pretty important point, and then I'll show you what I mean. Here's what a Revit model file and a Revit family file um, look like in AutoCAD after they've been attached as an underlay and saved as DWG in IntelliCAD. You probably know that in AutoCAD, you can't um, view or load a Revit file directly. But because AutoCAD can load custom objects and treat them as proxies, you can save a DWG file in IntelliCAD with a Revit underlay and then open it over in AutoCAD and use the data there. So the data is no longer locked into a single application. So what about the data? The data from the Revit file comes over um, with the file, the Revit file, or an IFC file, and it's included in the underlay custom object. ITC members can also access the source code for IntelliCAD, so that speeds the process. They can see directly how the IntelliCAD source code is uh, navigating with the ODA SDKs, and that can uh, further their own customization. And there's also a built-in user interface for um, accessing the BIM data within IntelliCAD. And I'll show you next during the demo. I'm hoping, I wasn't thinking I was up next, so. Um, I've got a live demo. I'm gonna step off and, all right. So, um, I'm just going to do the demo from, from over here. This is a Revit underlay in a DWG file in IntelliCAD. You can uh, zoom in. You can see that there's some interior aspects. There's stairs. You can come over here. There's uh, tables inside the building. Uh, you can change the visual style. pretty quickly, and if you select the underlay over on the properties pane on the left, you can see uh, that it's a Revit underlay object, and over on the right is a BIM pane where you can uh, see a bunch of data that's come in with the Revit file. You could do something like, uh, so it's got the categories, hierarchy, views. One thing you can do is uh, quickly, so I'm just going to turn off the roof, you can see it disappeared. Um, so that affects the display and the, the print. So one other um, kind of cool thing is IntelliCAD uses 
um, also uses the ODA architecture SDK. And let's see. There are all these elements over here that um, is calling in from the architecture SDK. So there are a ton of different walls, different types of doors, windows. But what I want to show is um, this new feature that just came into IntelliCAD section line and uh, extension lines. Those are also using architecture SDK. So let's see. See if I wanted to create a uh, section line here. So let's change the view. So here's kind of a plan view. Um, so again, this is a, a Revit underlay using the BIM RV SDK. And what you can do is um, which is pretty cool. So then I can go over and draw a section line. Which is calling uh, ODA architecture. And the section line is going to create a, a 2D projection of what it looks like to stand inside that building. So. Um, that's my section line. It has a symbol over on the left. You can see a little arrow that's showing uh, the direction where the 2D projection is going to go. And then here is the 2D projection. And you can see as if you were standing on that section line what it looks like inside the building. You can see tables, chairs. Um, let's go over here. You can see stairs. Um, so, just to recap, that was Tiga, uh, no, not Tiga, but ODA BIM RV SDK working together with the architecture SDK, which is pretty cool. Um, next, I want to switch over to uh, IntelliCAD 10, which is a beta version. Um, it, I wanted to show in um, this beta version of IntelliCAD some IFC functionality that just was released um, in the September release, the 2020 update one release from the ODA. So that was last week. Um, so I'll just open a couple, do a couple things with some IFC files. Uh, actually, let me create a new drawing. And we'll do a, a quick IFC import. So you just specify an insertion point. It's kind of like just attaching a um, underlay. Set the defaults for the scale factor and the rotation. So this is using the IFC SDK from, um, from ODA. Can do a quick zoom extents to see the whole model. And here you have, um, so this is using the import technology instead of the underlay technology, which means that um, the items are converted to drawing primitives that can be edited. So these are simple blocks. Um, you could change the visual style. And here, what I could do is change to like an x-ray visual style, which is also all these visual styles are available with the uh, ODA. So it kind of renders it, and you can still um, see inside the model. The last thing I want to show that just came online from the ODA, too, is, um, is exporting to an ISC file. So let me just open a file here that has some architecture objects in it. And um, you can see these are architecture objects over here. 
AEC objects. And that's important because if they weren't AEC, uh, if they weren't architecture objects, you wouldn't be able to get an IFC file. So I'm going to run a kind of a beta command. It's going to show us a shell dialog, which of course wouldn't be shipping. But um, it's really great to see it working as Sergey mentioned um, the project's only been um, happening for started nine months ago. So, um, so let's attach it as an underlay, the IFC file that we just created. Let's see. I'm going to insert BIM underlay. You can see that you can choose uh, Revit files, IFC files. And this is the file that was just created. You can check your clocks and see that that uh, just was exported. Just pick an insertion point and accept some defaults. You have to zoom to extents to see the whole model. And let's flip it up so you can see it. Um, and we could just change the visual style. Um, so that's um, that's an ISC file exported um, from a DWG file that had architecture objects, and that was um, delivered by the ODA just last week. It's pretty cool. All right, I have one more thing to talk about. Sorry. Um, st structural framing, um, HVAC, curtain wall systems. These are systems that are being designed and put into manufacturing um, currently, right now. And they're accessing BIM data from architecture, um, Autodesk architecture objects, um, Revit files, and IFC data, anything that can do I IFC. Um, so individually, I think these uh, individual implementations show that it's absolutely possible to access and utilize BIM data within DWG. But I also want to say that collectively, I think sort of the broader message is that it's freeing the BIM data. And it's freeing it to be used, practically speaking, anywhere. So thank you.